today we're going to be um, sorry so before we make a start we'd just like to introduce ourselves so I had some technical problems there so um, in terms of um, I'm Victoria Templeton HR knowledge manager for here at HR solutions and I'm joined today by my colleague Abby Ashford um, our lead HR consultant so um, Abby will be helping supporting in the questions and sharing her insights from a four-day working perspective and because we have so many of you who have joined us today, we've had to place you all on mute. However, we do, as always, like to hear your questions. So when you see this slide, um, what this will mean is that we're at the end of the webinar and we'll be ready to take your live questions. So what I thought I'd do now is just quickly just show you how you can raise your questions. So on the screen, you should see um, the, uh, uh, the GoToWebinar um, screenshot that shows you where you can put your questions so simply type in the questions in the question pane and as I say we'll aim to read out and answer as many as we can at the end and when you see this slide it means that we should be running a confidential poll in which we seek your input which will help in the running of our webinar today so if you do wish to participate then for some reason when you're um, in GoToWebinar you need to be out of the full screen mode And without further ado, I'm going to now um, look at a four day working week. And so in this webinar, we're going to first of all define what a four day week looks like. We'll then discuss the benefits and drawbacks of this working arrangement. We're going to explore how it can impact businesses and employees by looking at several case studies and get their insights. And then Abby and I will talk through some practical guidance on how to go about introducing it and obviously take your questions as part of that as well. So let's begin with the first poll of um, the webinar. So I'm going to launch a poll. Let's just call it up and launch. OK, so the first poll we're interested to know is actually at this moment, does your business offer already a four day working week? And there's uh, four, excuse me, four options. So I'll keep the poll open for a little bit. Okay, I'll just keep it open for a few more seconds and then we'll close the poll. Okay, I'm going to close that poll. I'm going to share the results. So, um, the biggest response is obviously no, which probably doesn't come as a surprise. Um, and 65% of you are actually considering doing so. So hopefully today's webinar will give you some thoughts to take away and to discuss in your business and uh, for you to take on board as to um, how you go about introducing it. And then obviously there's 27% um, of you that um, know that you're not wishing to introduce it. And interestingly, we have 2% of you that are already offering it on a permanent basis and 6% already partway through a trial. So if you've got any comments, Abby, on those results? Yeah, I mean, I, I expected to see that kind of 65% purely because people have been really curious of how the four day work, working trial has gone. And I think now it, it's come to that point where people say, OK, shall we do this? And when is the right time to do it? Do we want to be, you know, upfront and leading or mm. do we want to see what happens with other similar companies in similar sectors? So, yeah, that that's no surprise to me. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, no, I agree with that. So I'm just going to call up a second poll. And if you are currently trialling the four day working week, um, how long is your trial period for? So just a few percentage of you. Oh, sorry, I didn't launch it. Oh, oh no. Can't do that one. I'll come back to that one later. So I'm going to call up the next one. So if you're not going to be introducing a four day working week, what are the main reasons for this? Um, there could be um, several reasons, not knowing how to go about introducing it. I uh, think it'd be, um, it wouldn't be that easy to administer and manage or that it would work with your business, or obviously the negative impact um, 
it potentially could have. Okay, keep it open for a little bit longer. Okay, let's close those polls. Hopefully I'll do it right this time. <laughs> so, okay, we have 39% of you uh, currently don't think it will work within your business. And um, the potential for it having a negative impact on your customer service um, stroke clients, uh, which I totally get and can understand that because it is a big unknown, isn't it? It's, it's a very um, a new thing and um, a big change. And then 13% uh, of you are unclear about how to go about introducing it um, and not easy to administer. Yeah, all valid responses. Anything you've got to add, Abby? Um, I think if it was me answering it, I'd have wanted to probably tick all four of them. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously for the for the purposes of this poll, there was you could only um, select one. So it's interesting to see that the bottom two are the most um, pertinent, although probably more than one will have been relevant to most people on this poll today. But yeah, yeah hopefully with the don't know about how to introduce it, if people are, you know, keen to know more, then obviously this web webinar would be really, really helpful. Um, and people will get the slides afterwards as well to help yeah. them with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the administer manage, uh, I know you're, you're going to take us through a little bit about that, how it would work for our business and the negative impact mm -hmm. on customer clients. Because I think so many of our, um, our client base anyway that log on to these webinars and, and work with us a lot of them are customer service focused so that's the initial sticking point to get around how do you still deliver that service that people are used to um, without having everybody there five days a week necessarily so yeah it's mm. going to be a really interesting topic to talk about today yeah brilliant yeah I agree thank you Abby right I'm going to then close down that poll so you shouldn't be seeing that now Okay, so just can you see my slides move, Abby? Just want to check. I'm having a few technical issues. So. Yeah, that's no yeah, problem. Brilliant. We are defining a four day week. Yeah, perfect. So um, before we go on to explore the topic, obviously, I just want to clarify what we're meaning by a four day week. Because obviously, there's your obvious about, you know, your part time working or somebody working condensed hours of the same uh, 40 hour week into four days. Um, but for the purpose of today and what we're hearing about, obviously, um, generally in, in uh, societies around operating a four day week where organizations um, are following the 180 100 model so what that is meaning is that as an employer they're continuing to give 100 percent of pay but for 80 percent of the working hours worked and in exchange for the employee's commitment to maintain that 100 percent productivity and that's the model that was used in that um, huge pilot that cat started last year and finished early this year so um, we're going to focus on that model for the purpose of this um, this webinar and I guess this model brings many benefits but as with anything there are also drawbacks and so that's what we're going to look at now and I think the first thing to say is that um, you know, we've had the, the, the pilot that ran for six months and it clearly shows that there's uh, a good business case. It makes good business sense to operate four day uh, week. Um, so if we look at some of the, uh, the benefits, for example, we know it can reduce stress and burnout. You know, we are seeing an increase in this. We know from the health and safety executive that they reported last November that 17 million working days were lost due to stress, depression, anxiety in 2021-22. And it's on the rise and it is the biggest reason for workplace um, ill health. We know it can also leave, uh, lead to improved employee morale and motivation. So if you think about it, knowing that you have a Monday or Friday off, for example, and you're being paid the same, you know that you'll get in return a more engaged and focused workforce. And of course, having that increased morale and motivation leads to those uh, reduced stress levels and burnout, and therefore you're going to see less 
absenteeism and staff turnover. And of course, your ability to balance home and work life is going to lead to improving people's work life balance. And overall, with reduced absenteeism, lower staff turnover, you're going to see a reduction in your operating costs. You know, such things as, you know, less of a need to use agency workers. You're not going to have as big a recruitment fee bill if you're not having to do as much recruitment. Um, you're not paying out on your sick pay you know, if you offer enhanced sick pay or, you know, so you are going to make um, cost savings through operating those four day weeks. And of course, all of these combined can lead to an increased productivity. But obviously, with anything, there will always be drawbacks. And so you're going to need to consider what these are that are relevant to your business if you are thinking of adopting a four day week. So, for instance, it could be increased workload. And so with the 180-100 model, which says employees will receive the same pay, but working 80% of their hours, but with 100% productivity, this could be for some individuals be perceived as though they have additional work in practical terms, simply because they have less time in which to do their normal job. So if you have the whole workforce as well, that's operating four days, but the four days differ because you need to ensure that cover for your customers, then there could be additional work just from having to manage the coordination of work tasks and activities. So whilst I spoke a moment ago on the benefits of reducing stress levels, if you're not careful and if it's not introduced um, in the right way, then um, it could lead to a perception of actually people feeling overloaded and overworked, trying to fit in their, their five day work into four days. And, and as I said a moment ago, the scheduling. So it could bring scheduling challenges. So if you need to ensure uh, you've got cover across the business, especially if you remain open over, over those five days, but obviously employees only work the four, you're going to need to have some kind of rotor system or have agreed set days. And clearly employees will have their own preferences as to uh, which day is their day off. Um, so that might be a tricky area to consider how you manage. But yes, there could be uh, scheduling challenges that come with operating a four day working week. And despite the four day working week helping to reduce stress, like I've uh, spoken about, it can actually, as I say, bring on additional stress. And it will very much depend on the role, the culture of the workplace, the individual. But as I said, if you're operating that 180 100 model, and that employee has perception or feels the pressure in completing their work in fewer days. You know, it really, I think, depends on the person, the role, what's expected, and I guess what kind of measures are being put in place to help mitigate that. Um, but that is definitely one thing to be mindful of if you're considering putting it in. And customer service, like we've spoken about on the back of that poll, customer service can, if not carefully considered and planned for, be negatively impacted. So it's about considering things such as whether, um, you know, your delays and inefficiencies, whether they can occur if you're not coordinating your work team appropriately. You know, if you're having people working different days or, um, I think Abby touched on this, if a client is paying you for their services, you know, how do you reassure your client that even though the team work fewer hours delivering their contract, they're still going to get the same level of service and response? So whilst there are these drawbacks, I think it's fair to say that each business needs to work through their own challenges relevant to their context in which they operate um, and perhaps think of measures that can be brought in to support and minimise these or what you can what steps you can take to overcome them so i'm just going to open another quick poll hopefully i'll get this one right and it's about if you already offer a four-day week what's the main reason for doing so so let's launch this poll or even if you're thinking of um, introducing it what is your main reason for doing so so whether it's in the, uh, to improve your ability to recruit reduce staff turnover employ employee improve employee engagement um, or well-being as well. So let us know what your main reasons are. So I'll keep it open for a little few more minutes. OK, 
Okay. Last few votes coming in. Okay, I'm going to close the poll and share the results. So, yeah, I mean, I expected all um, actually to be answered to some extent. And obviously, the biggest by far is employee well-being. And like I've said, you know, health and safety executive have said stress has been the main reason for sickness absence. We've seen through our own SME survey report earlier this year that the main reason or the main priority for businesses, SMEs this year is employee well-being, mental health. Um, so 80 percent actually doesn't surprise me. Um, and yes, they, it is a great tool for improving employee engagement, reducing staff turnover and uh, ability to recruit, which you know we will see as we discuss some of the case studies. Abby, I don't know whether you've got any thoughts on these as well. Yeah, I, um, I actually thought that the recruit one was going to be higher, so I'm really, mm. really interested in this. I suppose that the middle two are both um, to do with retention mm. uh, loosely. So yeah, it, it maybe it does give an indication that um, the recruitment problems are maybe going away a little bit for people, which would be lovely to hear because we've been through such a long period of yeah. it being so hard to recruit people. And I know we we feel, Victoria, that we're still yeah. in that difficult stage, um, but certainly we've got, um, you know, the, the retention issues as well and engagement. So, yeah, I, I, I am initially surprised, mm. but of course the well-being one, not a surprise. No. Although we do have to balance that with what you were saying earlier about people not being overloaded working yeah. on full day, yeah. because that would then mean that all of those people that have felt like they would have improved well, well-being by doing yeah. this um, different full day working approach then swung right the other way so, yeah yeah it, it's it's all about getting it right and getting the balance right yeah it? and i think you know we're hearing of you know burnout i mean i think um it's a massive issue isn't it and we need to be supporting our workforce and you know ultimately if you're supporting your workforce and people are fit well and healthy you're gonna get like i said lower absenteeism more engagement higher productivity but ultimately from a duty of care it's about supporting your employees as well but yeah striking that fine balance so that they don't feel overworked by having to fit all their work in four days so that's why i said it's it's very um specific to each business organization the environment in which it operates you know the type of job roles etc but yeah very interesting results thank you for um, sharing your thoughts on that and then i believe we should have another one here so and this is about the challenges um that your business face um by having a four day uh week so um what would the challenges be for your business And that again links in with your customer service, coordination of work, productivity, managing the the four day week. Right, a few more seconds and then I'll bring it to a close. You know, we'll share the results and it's interesting isn't it because we see in the press all this about the four-day week we're hearing organizations piloting starting it it was even talked about in the prime minister's questions of the wednesday wasn't it because um one local council um but actually when you delve into it and look into it there are challenges that really need thinking carefully and thinking about actually how can you overcome those so looking at the poll results what have we got here? So you've got 32, 33%. So that's about the coordination of work and obviously productivity um, with 25% uh, being the ability to continue providing excellent customer service and ultimately how to manage who has which day off. Yeah, because obviously you've got to ensure that any arrangement or working practice that you put in is also non-discriminatory as well. So it's being mindful of how you do you do that in a very fair, open, transparent way. Have you got any thoughts, Abby, on these uh, results? Yeah, I guess it, I have in mind the different clients I work with, mm -hmm. and there are very few actually that I think this would be 
where they would be able to implement something because of the different shift patterns that people do you know some people especially in hospitality you know seven day operation 24 hours a day sometimes and just think how does it fit neatly into the box of moving from a five day week mm -hmm. to a four day week because there, there, there are so many different uh, types of working pattern as well that people have and, and also in like um roles where there's commission for example if you were it's sort of notoriously difficult to do job share types of things in a commission-based role because how do you decide who was doing what who gets their fair share so th there's so many different variables mm. to throw into it but I, I think in in the main if you've got a, a very simple business model on yeah. a five-day working week perhaps where people historically haven't been amazingly busy for the next five days <laughs> then moving to a four day that's the kind of situation where it's going to be easier shall we say mm. so i think coordination of work across the team and productivity yes um those would be the, the key challenges for yeah. certain for the people i work with yeah well we'll um, look at some of the sectors that the four day week trial um involved shortly when we come on to that but yeah i absolutely get i think it does very much depend on the business doesn't it um, for some it may be quite manageable to introduce for others very very difficult so thank you abby Let's go on to the next part of the webinar, which is all about um, the case studies that I've just talked about. So hopefully by going through these uh, three cases that we've got, it will give you an insight into how other employers have um, dealt with it. So the first one is going to be looking at that um, four day week pilot that we keep talking about. The second one is a local council and the third one um, is a charity. So. Um, Let's get looking at these. And this first one then is the actual four day week global pilot. So it was a, um, a campaign that, or a pilot that was um, in collaboration with the four day week campaign, four day week global and autonomy. And together they uh, created, monitored, managed um, and implemented this pilot scheme that involved 61 organizations over a six month period. Now here are the sectors in which um, the pilot scheme um, was introduced. So we've got construction, marketing, um, health and social care, consultancy, so a broad range of organisations that trialled it, predominantly employing uh, 25 employees or less. Obviously, that's just 66% of participants were small SMEs, with obviously uh, um, 50 or more being at 22%. And there's, you know, there were even several that were um, large scale organizations, but on the whole, it really focused and involved SMEs employing you know, fewer than 25 people. And this slide has basically shown you sort of the results that we saw from it. 15% of employees said no amount of money would persuade them to accept a five day work week in the future. And we ourselves are already sort of seeing that feedback or, or observing that in the recruitment market. 92% of employees are uh, um, I'm sorry, of employers are continuing with the four-day week. So of those 61, you've got 92% of them that are carrying it on. 39% of employees have, uh, were less stressed. 71% uh, saw a reduction in burnout. The 60% of employees um, saw an increased ability to combine work and caring responsibilities where it's looking after um, an elderly parent, children. Um, so obviously it's had a, had a massive beneficial impact on those individuals. From an operational point of view, revenue generally stayed the same, rising by 1.4% on average over the duration of the, um, the trial, but revenue um, increased by an average third, on average by 35%. Staff turnover reduced by 57% and um, like I said, 15% of employees said that no amount of money would persuade them to accept a five day work week. So that's um, all the interesting statistics from the report. A copy of the slides obviously are going out and there'll be a link to that report. So you'll be able to take a read of it um, later. And the case, uh, case study number two is about South District Cambridge Council. So you may have heard about it, it's been in the news. And this is the one that was referenced in uh, Prime Minister's questions the other Wednesday. Um, but that's more to do from a, a, a political perspective in terms of um, how it's perceived by um, the public, given it's a public sector. But just for the purpose of today, um, they 
as a council, there were, their previous ways of working, uh, they saw many, many issues. It included recruitment and retention issues. Their spending on um, agency staff was over two million a year. And when it came to recruiting for their vacancies, they found that eight of every 10 or even fewer vacancies could be uh, filled. So they had real problems in, um, in recruitment. They moved to a four day working week and just in the first three months of trialling it, the annual wage bill had decreased by £300,000. Uh, the amount of agency staff required uh, significantly reduced. They found that several employees stayed on in employment when they may have otherwise left. So obviously it helped their retention. And from an operational perspective, 56% of the business areas within the council showed substantial improvement in their performance. 43% of the business areas remained at a similar level, but not one area saw a drop in performance. And that's by introducing that four day working week. Now, the third case study that um, we'll spend a little bit, little bit more time on is the Royal Society of Biology. And they took part in that six month global pilot. They continued to operate over five days to ensure that all areas of the business were covered, but they adopted a work pattern where employees would have either the Monday or the Friday off. Now, the four day arrangement they introduced um, as part of the pilot, obviously non-contractual, and they shifted from a 35 hour, five day week to a 32 hour, four day week with uh, keeping pay at the same level. Now, there is a link on this slide here, which I said um, a moment ago, you'll be able to access where you can watch an interview that they gave about their four day uh, trial and how they've progressed it. Um, the things I would say in terms of um, their concerns at the start of the trial is they felt that employees were concerned whether they could complete their jobs in a shorter week. So what we've been speaking to on um, a moment ago, you know, the feeling of stress and pressure to get their job done in that shorter week. From an operational point of view, concerns related to their contractual obligations with their clients, you know, could they continue to fill those contractual obligations? They're a charity that deals with members or works with membership bodies and clients. And so a concern was very much around um, how would the membership bodies and clients perceive the business delivering only on four fifths of a contract. And they felt that there could be pushback from the member organizations about whether the customer service could be delivered if employees were working a shorter week. So these were their challenges that they set out and identified from the outset. Now, they introduced a trial and what they found was that they could actually deliver on their contractual obligations to their clients and membership bodies. There was no detrimental impact, so they could maintain and sustain that. They saw massive improvement in staff well-being, work-life balance improved, and their employees uh, were generally happier and therefore also more motivated. From a practical point of view, the business could manage the workload. And what they decided at the end of the trial period was to continue with a four day week. And they're actually offering it on a non contractual arrangement with a view to reviewing it on an annual basis. They have actually said that they would very much recommend other businesses adopt a four day week. In terms of their feedback on operating and trialing the four day week program, they were, they were asked a couple of things around, you know, what would you do differently? And they've said that they would spend more time with staff on how to deal with the feelings of guilt or the feeling of needing to log on when actually it is OK not to be working on that fifth day. Um, so there's um, that was one of the issues they had to sort of work hard on trying to overcome. And so on reflection, they would spend a lot more time on that early on. And they would um, also communicate more with key stakeholders on any of the impact uh, that would come from it and try and obviously give those reassurances that actually work can be fulfilled across a five day week. So that, that was their feedback about whether they would do anything different. 
and they talk about um, advice to other businesses is, you know, they're very much around, you know, they strongly rec recommend having an ethos to not change salary. Otherwise, it's an impediment to people taking part. You know, get your employees to look at ways of working to see can things be done more efficiently? What can stop, start, continue? You know, get your employees to ask themselves, why are we doing that? to see if any aspects of the work can be stopped or just carried out in a much more efficient way. Obviously, consulting with staff is key. Um, they report that their own workforce produced lots of questions. And so talking it through about how it would work in practice is really vital to its success and to overcome any challenges. So it's important employees are, uh, fully understand and uh, the Advice is also to be thorough in the communication with the, with your members, clients, customers about the reassurance that their contract or their service can still be delivered. So that was quite insightful to hear their takes, you know, share their learnings, their recommendations to move forward. So I thought that was interesting. So taking all of that, we're going to now sort of look at the practical guidance around doing it. So we've got a case study, the one that we just mentioned, where they chose to do it on a non-contractual basis. Obviously, some organisations might want to go down a contractual route and make it more uh, permanent from that perspective. But I think what this, um, what we can see here, I think the first thing to do when you're thinking about adopting a four-day week is What's the purpose? You know, as with any people based initiative, you've got to link it back to your business goals, which should be identified through your strategic HR planning. So that way you've got a clear objective rationale for the business case uh, that you want to implement. And this is going to be very important for mitigating any risk uh, when you're proposing. You know, if you are proposing to change an employee's terms, conditions of employment, there has to be that business case laid down. But even if you're going down the non-contractual route, but you want to introduce it, you still need to have it aligned to your business goals. And it's got to, there's got to be a, a reason and purpose for it. So like I've said earlier, you know, some of the reasons could be about, you know, you, help, you hope it helps tackle your inability to recruit. It can help you remain competitive with local employers when it comes to attracting candidates. Uh, perhaps you've got high turnover and you want to use it as a mechanism to help reduce that, improve employee engagement or um, like many of us have already identified on the polls to help uh, address the burnout. So it's really thinking about the purpose of it. Why do you want to do it and aligning it with your business goals? And if we think about the communication side of it, uh, it's obviously key, not just internally with employees, but with key stakeholders, like we've learned from that case study with the um, Royal Society of Biology. So I think um, the first thing to say is have that business plan. You need to get buy in from the top. You need to also have um, your employees engaged with you and take them with you right from the outset. You need to get their buy in um, because it's fundamental to the introduction, especially if you're going to be going down, making it a contractual change. You need to um, have a fair, reasonable, transparent process in which you do that. Clearly, consultation is key. Um, it, you know, it needs to happen even if you're not doing a formal change to terms and conditions and um, you still need to be consulting with your employees, trade unions if you recognise trade unions and seek, in, seek feedback and input from everybody before going into the trial, during and, and also after the trial. I think employees will give great value in terms of you know, their thoughts on how you can mitigate some of the potential challenges. So by trying to identify challenges right from the outset as part of your planning um, and setting out your business case, I think then seeking input from your employees, the trade unions, on perhaps what you can do to mitigate those will really add value. And, it, and another aspect of communication is around communication with your customers, your clients on the changes. You know, what steps are you proposing to take to ensure productivity remains as is? You know, how can you give them your reassurances that um, the customer service isn't going to uh, suffer as a detriment? 
um, but and really engage with um, your clients or customers. And if you are considering formal changes to terms and conditions, like I said, you need to manage a fair, reasonable, transparent process that involves a formal consultation. You need to obviously understand what's in the contract of employment initially, um, because ultimately you need to be carrying out a lawful, fair process. In terms of having a plan in place, um, to implement it, then, like I said, understand your current contractual obligations initially, because you need to make a decision on whether you want to um, introduce it as a non-contractual or whether actually you're going to make it more permanent and be a contractual for everybody. Um, if it's contractual, then it's planning how you're going to carry out that uh, contractual process so it's lawful and uh, therefore mitigate against any risks of tribunal claims uh, for constructive dismissal, etc. Um, think about what the four day week means for your business. What does it look like? Will it follow that 100 80 100 model? And then look at the content of your job roles. You know, what can stop, start, continue? Um, look at the way in which uh, the job roles are carried out. Are there any alternative ways of working those job roles in order to bring efficiencies? Because really, you know, it comes back to that point where if people feel that they're still doing the same amount of work in the four days, you want to alleviate any concerns of feeling overwhelmed or pressured. So if you can streamline how people do their work, that will help with those uh, fears. Obviously, look at the potential challenges and how can they be overcome. So, like um, we've spoken about, you know, the increased workload, scheduling challenges. You know, how can you prevent additional stress? Uh, what challenges could you face from a customer point of view? And um, you know, think about how they uh, overcome benefits, employee benefits, like Abby mentioned, commission, you know, think about the knock-on impact of what a four-day work week means to employee benefits. Um, are you going to operate a pilot? I would suspect most people will want to operate a pilot, so how long will that be in place for? And what does success look like of that pilot scheme? How are you going to measure the success? And really importantly is how can you ensure that when you're introducing a four day week, you're not inadvertently discriminating. So if we think back to that case study of the Royal Society of Biology, they went from a that they still remained a five day operation. Obviously, employees tended to have either the Monday or the Friday off. But what they did was because of um, childcare responsibilities for some individuals, they were, you know, they had their other day off in the week um, instead, so like Wednesdays. So it's about how you operate uh, the day off, um, taking into account people's personal circumstances, hence why consultation is so key, because you need to understand the implications. Um, and then also, how will you monitor performance of your employees during the trial and if taken forward on a permanent basis? Because if you're doing that 180-100 model, then you're expecting still the 100% of uh, productivity. So how can you measure that? So I think there's a lot of things to be thinking about when you're planning for it. Um, the one thing I'd say, it starts off with your HR strategic planning, You know, thinking about what's the aim, what really are you trying to achieve by introducing it, what business goal will it align with? Because obviously it's got to make business sense um, and, and really brainstorm all of this before you um, sort of set forward and um, approach implementing it. So there's a lot of thought that goes into it. Um, and some organisations might be more complex than others. You know, so like um, Abby said, when you've got, you know, hospitality sector where it's a seven day operation, you know, those challenges and how it will work will be very, very different to an office environment, Monday to Friday, where um, nine to five hours um, are operated. You know, that's going to be less complicated. So really think about your own business and um, how you can um, 
overcome potential challenges. So before we get to questions, I'm going to run one last poll. And this is going to be, let's launch that. So I'm going to revisit an earlier poll. Um, so those that answered no when asked if you're going to operate it, this time, now we've seen some of the statistics, the evidence, the case studies, do you think that you may um, look to introduce trialling it in your workplace? And it may be you need perhaps more evidence, more research. And I think the more and more organisations do it and we hear more and more, there'll be more information to sort of see how other places, other workplaces have um, gone about introducing it. So let's close the polls and share the results. So yes, yeah, 64% still unsure. And I guess it's it probably reflects that it's not straightforward, like probably what you um, people are reading in the press. It's not straightforward at all. There's a lot to consider, lots of challenges perhaps to overcome. Um, so yeah, um, I totally get that. And uh, but 25% of you feel perhaps it could work in your business. So that's that's good to hear. And hopefully, if it can bring improvements to your any recruitment challenges, employee well-being, then um, and obviously business performance, and that's uh, it's a good thing. And obviously, 11% of you um, are still no, so that's absolutely fine as well. And um, like we say, it's not um, one for all. It doesn't automatically apply to, can apply to all organisations. It's very uh, specific to each and every one. And then I've got one more poll here. Which area of people management do you believe it can benefit your business if you are going to be um, now looking at it? So that for those of you that were initially no, but yes or unsure, tell us what you think could be, how it could help your business. Okay, let's close that and share the results. So yeah, okay, so improve employee wellbeing. So I think that's our biggest score, isn't it, um, on this poll and our previous one for people. It's about employee uh, improving employee wellbeing. You know, as I said, we are seeing a lot of burnout and stress-related absences. Uh, and then 72% employee engagement, yeah. And like Abby said, that links in generally with uh, your staff turnover. And recruitment, 35%. So hopefully if you are going to um, take this information away and sort of give it consideration in your workplace, you know, I wish you well and hope um, that uh, you can see if it um, benefits your organisation. Let's hide that. And I think we're ready for questions, Abby, at mm -hmm. the end of the slides. So um, fire away with any questions you may have. Sure. So we, we have got a, a couple. Um, there were um, quite a few sort of technical ones and, and about the, the, the matter itself, getting links and things. But when we send through the slides, you'll be able to see the links to that YouTube video yeah. and, and different reports. So, so that's that's all a given. In terms of um, <clears throat> feedback and questions, really, I mean, I was just sat here listening to you and just thinking through all the different questions that my client base would come up with. And one of them has come through from a, a webinar question today, and that's about what about the situation where you haven't got that nice, neat, everybody works full time, nine to five thirty, Monday to Friday. That would be the easiest scenario yeah. to think about um, implementing something like this. But in reality, think about all those flexible working requests that have come in over the years that we've, you know, hopefully been able to implement for people. Mm -hmm. um, but you, we might have agreed to somebody working four days a week and had their pay reduced accordingly, so their pro rata, or maybe five mornings or five afternoons or whatever it might be. We've had some kind of reduction in hours, reduction in pay as a consequence. Um, and then if we went to implement something like this, 
what would we be doing for them? Would we then be putting them back on a five day salary, um, but asking them to do the hours of what everybody else would be moving to as in for full days? So that's, that's immediately a really tricky point. Because I, I think that, you know, I work four days, <laughs> but I'm part time. <laughs> I'm not four days as in the 8100, no, 100, 80, 100 model. Yes. Um, and it is, how, you know, it's the perception, first of all, how it will go down in your workplace. How do you um, deal with those employees that already work four days, but on a part time basis, not full time? When I say full time, as in not your 180, 100. I think the thing that there, there will be a difference, won't there, between to so say for me, for example, part time, four days, I work proportionally. So for four days, I don't work five days worth of work in my four days. Do you mm. know what I mean? Mm, I do, I do. But these, these well, are the kind of scenarios that people are going to have. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's how you can communicate that, isn't it, with your workforce, if you're going to be introducing it to, yeah. Because there is a difference. There will be a difference. <laughs> if you've got people yeah. um, working four days because they're part time and four days because they're full time, mm. it's how you communicate, manage expectations. Doesn't mean to say you have to change a part timer's pay up to full time if they've never been full time. <laughs> See what I mean? Mm. I do, I do. And I, I just wonder whether companies who were thinking of introducing this that have got lots of different working patterns from flexible working requests mm. or from just people s starting as new hires on something other than five days full time, whether they would then want to take everybody sort of back to a different starting point and say, right, based on you being five days um, full time and on this salary, we would then propose to move you to this working pattern and not change your salary. Is that something you're interested in? And I guess they would just have to look at all the different financial figures, the productivity um, and how much of a saving it would be or yeah. not and, I mean, and weigh up whether it would, it would exactly. uh, fit. And it, a workout, you know, of your headcount, how many people will be in that situation where they're already working four days a week, but part time? So the context, the extent of which it could be potentially an issue, and then what operational decision does the company want to take to, if any, to either address it um, or not? Because technically they don't have to because they are still part-time, whereas somebody that's moving to a four-day week isn't part-time. No. They're still full time <laughs> so it's exactly. it's yeah it's it's that that's one of the challenges then to work through when you're preparing and planning for it um and it's just about costing it all out and um what you may want to do as a measure of i mean you might want to be prepared to i don't know make some discretionary offer mm. or legally they are part-time mm, that's right and and you know other different operations people who operate a six-day week mm. can they adopt the same model but go from six day to five days um that there are there are so so many things to do but it's all very much based on whatever your business model is um mm. the, the other the other question we've had victoria is for anyone running uh this four day week now have they given employees the chance to opt out which I think is a fascinating question because I guess there are people around the world <laughs> who yeah. quite happily work who five days work. a week and don't, who don't actually want to be given the opportunity to work less. Um, I can't imagine it, but there might be people <laughs> like I, that in the world. I, think, uh, <laughs> I mean, I think if people are using that 100 model, 80, 100 model, where the pay is staying the same, I can't, I mean, I can't imagine people will not want to participate in it. I mean, no, <laughs> no I mean, and the you're getting paid about... <laughs> um, 
That's, that's an interesting one, isn't it? I think it if you weren't, really. I think if you weren't honouring the pay, and it was therefore more like mm. part time, mm. people are more likely to. Ah, no, I'm not bothered about that. I'm happy to work my five days. Um, sorry, what was your question about that? How you deal with it? Well, I or mean, just... the question is asked, actually asking if anybody in the trial um, had the chance to opt out, which I, I'm not sure we've got I'm the not, details. You know, I haven't got the details. Um... No, but also I'm just thinking, you know, from a fairness perspective, I think that would be quite, quite an issue if people did opt out and were still doing five days on the same pay mm. just because they wanted to, to work that. I think that would be really a real strange disparity. And also, would they expect a pay rise? For doing the five days I don't know that, that that would be very very difficult but I, I can't even imagine that they would have had anybody asking no and this is this is why I think engaging with the employees right from the outset um, clearly managing expectations right making sure that no promises are being given but getting feedback and thoughts around you know what does people think about people that are already working four days <laughs> You know, and that all helps make, uh, you know, an informed decision. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know if anybody had the option of opting out. Oh, well, clearly, it's non-contractual. Um, non um, and I, I don't believe anybody opted out or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, but agreed. Um, and, and really, just a couple of um, of my, my thoughts on this, in the, if people do do it, um, really work the benefits of it in terms of you know checking in with new hires um, that have, have started with the business asking them you know was the fact that we do this um, 180 100 model on four day week a key factor for why you wanted to come and work for us yeah. you know and do you think that it's working well and really publicize it because it's a huge benefit if you can actually do this and yeah. you can afford it. Uh, if the figures work out for you, you know, use social media, publicise it, um, use it as a as a recruitment tool, uh, as well as a retention tool, and, and get get employees to do quotes or interviews even mm. that you can post online, saying how good it is. I mean, if you can go as far as get some customer quotes as well and say how it hasn't impacted on service delivery, um, and that they're quite happily still liaising with their key contacts who seem very happy to work where they are you know it's an amazing recruitment tool I would say I think it's massive especially you know with the recruitment challenges that we've spoken about that we're still seeing um, it's a massive uh, attraction isn't it and if you want to stand out against competitors and um, you know if you're being the only employer in the local area that's offering four day week people are going to snap the chance to come and work for you, I think. We, we have, sorry, we have had a question about how do we introduce a four day week in a manufacturing production setting. Now, okay. from, from memory, Victoria, I don't think there were any production settings in that 61 companies that did the trial. I don't believe, right. I can't think, uh, I don't believe so. It was all desk based jobs, That's, wasn't it? Yeah. Really? But I think it's about looking at uh, it's resource planning, isn't it? Looking at your operations, um, your teams, how you structure the work, the hours, and then it's working out how you can operate some kind of rotor system, I suppose, mm. to enable people to work their shifts over four days, not five. Um, but making sure there's sufficient cover. Um, uh, yeah, and it would be uh, easier if they didn't do overtime as well on top, I would imagine. It's what, sorry? It would be easier if they don't yeah. do overtime yeah. as well on top. Yeah, <laughs> it actually had that all then impact on it all. Because they might do overtime, so they're still doing five days. <laughs> yeah. um, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, but yeah, for me, I think manufacturing, definitely light is the resource planning element of it making sure that your, your production lines are sufficiently covered at any time over that four day period as opposed to a five day period um, getting um, unions involved as well and get their input yeah yeah true um 
I've got another one that isn't a question, but that's an interesting uh, comment just to share with you. Um, so somebody said, I work for an IT company where our client pays for hours of work. If we change to a 180-100 model, our income would therefore reduce. I can't see a way of introducing the four-day week where this wouldn't happen. So yeah, in, in that kind of business model, it, it just sounds like it wouldn't work, unfortunately. Mm. <laughs> no. Unless you, you, you find ways of getting more work in on those four days. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Someone else saying that they would envisage that it just wouldn't work where you've got part time workers who have already chosen to work, which no. you've already talked through, Victoria. Yeah. Um, uh, one more question that's come in. Are there medium term studies giving results after two, three, four, five years? Not at the moment. Um, it's still fairly new, although, um, oh no, who is it? I, there was one company that was the first major organisation to bring it in back in something like 2019, and they're continuing with it. I can't remember who it was now. <laughs> um, it's, I think, in the hot topic that I vote. The, um, but generally, I mean, there's loads and loads of organisations operating it. Um, loads worldwide and yeah this isn't just a uk thing there's trials and pilots going on all across the world i mean it's just taking employment by storm isn't it and it, it it's just getting employers thinking differently about how work is done so with the pandemic it was all about how can you do work differently i.e through uh, teams and virtual now it's about can you do the work in a different arrangement um but yeah so i don't know um offhand but i just know that there's so many organizations uh, organizations out there trialing it already doing it permanently um and yeah <clears throat> Okay, well, uh, there's a couple more questions come through, but to keep us to time finishing for 11, I'll let you carry on, Victoria, okay. and we'll answer the other questions um, after the webinar. Yeah, okay, brilliant, thank you. So, let's move the slides on. So, really, it's just to bring it to a close, and it's just to let you know about um, the training and webinars that we can offer and support you all with. So, as you know, we offer training courses in uh, management skills, um, as you can see here on the list, and we also offer the ILM levels three and five. So if you do have any uh, needs or training requirements, do get in touch, there's a QR code there. We also offer health and safety training. Um, we've talked a lot about mental health. Mental health is one of our major biggest requests for first aid training. So we do mental health first aid as well as mental health ambassador training as well. And then in terms of the free webinars, the one in July that I'll be running is about um, why businesses need a different approach to recruitment. Obviously, given the challenges that we're, we continue to have with the recruitment, how can you do it differently? August is all about building skills and capabilities within your workforce. And then September, we're going to be looking at how to become an age-friendly employer. And in October, ready for some developments around November, I believe, we're going to look at some of the immigration developments and how they impact employment. So if you um, want to register, please do. There's the QR code there. And then also, actually, if you do um, have any thoughts for topics to include on our webinar schedule, please do get in touch because um, we're going to be setting the new schedule over the next few weeks. So it'd be great to get your input. Let us know what your sort of um, interests, area of interests are that we can be talking to you about. One quick poll before uh, we close, and it's just as usual, the one around how you may like our help if you would on any of our services. So it might be that you'd like our support on some H H HR services, whether it's a retainer clients, a helpline, um, project work, knowledge base, um, health and safety services, payroll training. You, you let us know and we can get in touch with you after the event. Keep it open for a few more seconds. Okay, let's close that. Okay, and let's move on.
here we go and really that just brings us to a close and just to say thank you everybody uh, for joining us today um, it's been really interesting as a subject really great questions so thank you and your participation in the polls as well um, sorry for any initial technical blips um, but we hope to see you on um, our next webinar next month and thank you to Abby for um, supporting in the webinar as well so have a good day everybody and I'll see you next month <laughs>